and most cases I tried to take the definition that was in the zoning and I've indicated where it's unclear but so again definition of landscaping business permissible activities um, again for purposes of the subsection a landscaping business this is from the zoning itself uh, a landscaping business is defined as a business concern which operates to construct, install, and maintain lawns, trees, yards, shrubs, gardens, patios, related grounds, and other outdoor areas which are owned by others. The landscaping business may own or lease real and personal property, employ employees, and may be authorized by special permit to own, lease, operate, and store vehicles and equipment reasonably necessary for business operations, and that is later in this order of conditions. Um, we also have later, uh, and that's, that's under B, where it says additional authorized activities. So the A has just those first three primary items. Any questions? Well, I, I, I you know, I have to, uh, we, we've got to make sure that everything is here. Yep. Okay. Okay. I, I think you've, you've tried the Get everything Just so I didn't interpret this correctly, that they have, they have 17 employees. Four, six, seven. Nineteen. Nineteen. Thirteen. And Josh and Maggie. Josh and Maggie. Oh, oh okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Seventeen total. Yeah. Do you think we should put the total under the table? Does no, that make no. it easier? I okay. just, if I interpreted it correctly, I think okay. it's six. So then... Additional author, and, I, and, and to Alex's point, I would encourage you as we go through and I identify that such and such came from the zoning, you know, feel free to go back and check to make sure that we have accurately pulled it. When you have multiple authors on something, it's always worth checking. Um, so B, additional authorized activities. That's where the next part of that paragraph comes. The planning board may authorize under spe this special permit the following activities. So one, own, lease, operate, and store vehicles and equipment reasonably necessary for business operations. Um, you'll see my comment on this page that actually now refers to a later part of the document. Two, it says sell trees, shrubs, sod, seam, loam, mulch. That should say mulch, not much. And related material. Uh, we've listed the materials. This list, uh, this table comes from the application. So it's listed the materials and then the 2012 total volume. It's noted that this volume is in cubic yards and annually. So we have the Nutra mulch at 3,300 cubic yards, hemlock mulch at 1,000 cubic yards, playground trips, chips at 350 cubic yards, and loam at 1,500 cubic yards. And then this flips over to the next page. Nutra soil at 1,500, Organigro compost at 2,000 and sand at 500 and again those come from the application if, if these are all quantity, annual total annual annual quantities. total annual quantities is there, so is there, can we figure a way that we can put in uh, a maximum quantity i think it given quantity. that's a good question tim and i actually talked about that and when we get to the storage of materials that opportunity is in there um, i think we try we put some test language in there but we're not sure if it's clear enough so I would look for input, definitely look for input on that because we went back and forth about how we would do that. We, we need so. to do it because the, the point being we yes, exactly. want to make something somewhat enforceable. Right, and we want to make sure. So this, this section enforces the total amount that they can purchase over the year. The, the storage of materials section would be the storage at any given time. So. How is uh, how are we going to determine this? Whether or not they need it, well, that's no, good. Uh, how are we going to determine whether or not they haven't got more? At any given time? No, oh, in, in a year. In the annual total, in the year. In the annual, in the year. So that's a good question um, that we should discuss. I mean, one option, of course, would be uh, do we require the applicant to submit an annual report of some sort that says, you know, these were the conditions we had to meet during the year. Here's how we met those conditions. Um, and it might be more than just these. I'm not sure this is uh, something that we are able to decide tonight. Is it something where instead of an annual report to the board, we ask them to keep the records and if anybody requests to see them, like the building inspector because there's been a complaint, then they have to prove at that time. So I'd be interested. 
Yeah, maintain sort of some sort of log that can be inspected. Certainly when we get to the deliveries portion that's in the zoning that they maintain a log. So I guess I'd open that up to the board is do we want them to maintain logs that can be inspected or submit reports that we would have to review on they, they, whatever basis. I would assume for their own purposes they maintain some kind of you know, inventory of what, what came in and the different materials. I'm not I wouldn't be comfortable at a log level. I think it's more of an annual report. I'm not sure who the report goes to or and if it's something that needs to be submitted or it's something that's available for review. Okay. Um, I'd want it at least certified by an officer okay. of the organization. Um, okay. I don't think it needs to be something that's audited necessarily, but I think certified by someone that's an officer is, is important. So then I think if we're looking at the idea of an annual report as we go through here, we should identify what items what would go on that annual report and pot potentially even do some sort of draft of what that report would look like. You know, do we have a, a grid that gets filled out and that that's what gets handed to the board? If we decide we'd rather do the log, because again, I think we're not going to know that answer until we go through mm -hmm. and identify what actually needs to be tracked. If we decide we want a log, then I think we need to identify um, what columns we'd want in that log or what categories. So how, exact, how exactly do we need them to present the information so that it is reviewed consistent with the permit. Yeah, Alex. It's got to be verifiable. Verifiable. Uh, because yeah. if it's not verifiable, it isn't worth, mm -hmm. it's not worth getting. Uh, so presumably, and for something like this, the invoices over the year would be the verification of what they purchased. So I, I mean, keeping a log doesn't seem to me to be the end of the world. Mm -hmm. But that log would be backed up by the invoice. Yes, yeah. like, yeah. and I think the certification is important. And then if we want to have that, you know, I don't know if we want to have a copy of every receipt or not, but certainly it's something that if, if, if we had an audit right, if we needed to have an audit right, I'm not sure how you would trigger that, but right. they'd have to keep the records for a certain number of years. Uh, that's typically how we handle it in the reporting structures where we have a lease requirement. To report. Okay. So you don't actually provide the invoices so the person that you're reporting to has the right to come back and audit them and they have to keep them for X That's number correct. of years. Okay. I think that makes more sense than giving us invoice after invoice after yes. invoice. Yeah. But I, I, to your point, I mean, the, the log, if the log is certified by an officer, I'm, I think that would be suitable. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with both. I mean, if you have a log, you can periodically say, well, and I'm sure some of these materials come in in bulk in March and April and May, and then they don't see any in November, December. But, right. You know, so it's, mm -hmm. I, I think, again, I don't think it'd be anything outstanding for them anyways. I mean, to, to take a list of 10 materials and say, I received 300 cubic yards in such and such a day, mm -hmm. mark in a book. Okay. Received 200 yards so in such and such a day. So date, certainly material, quantity, are the types of things that we'd be looking to track. Yes. Just a, uh, we're all taking notes to a certain point, but uh, someone has got to incorporate these, and are we, you and Tim are point people here? I would say for the moment, Tim and I would be the point people okay. on this. So, so, so yeah, just to clarify that, it's good. Just so out. that uh, uh, we, we don't find ourselves real <laughs> you <laughs> Everybody comes it. in with a new draft, yes. No, I think that makes sense, is that Tim and I will keep, keep control of the draft for the moment, just so that we can report all of these. Feel free to take your own copious and detailed we can, notes. We can, yeah. just we can like backtrack and yes. glaze over something we've already said. Yep, that answer that. Okay. Yeah, keep exactly. Over, keep over refine it as we Right. One, one thing uh, is that, uh, and I've lost the... You're, jumping, you're going to jump ahead on us? Well, what page were we just on? We were just four. on five. five. Oh, skipped over oh five. Uh, on, yeah. on page four. Yes. Uh, one, own, lease, operate, and store vehicles and equipment reasonably necessary for business operations. As you recall, the way we're going to be measuring that their business operations do not exceed yes. the 2012 level is we're going to look at the number of vehicles and make sure the number of vehicles don't exceed the number and type of vehicles. Exactly. But, but that 
That is, it, this is, it, it may be reasonably necessary, but if it exceeds, it can't exceed. It used to say not to exceed. To reference the, to exceed. the limit yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, it's actually on pages six and seven, but you're absolutely right. The limit needs to be referenced here as well. Not to exceed. So the, li the list themselves is under, we, and Tim and I went back and forth as to where this table actually belonged. Right now it's under e-vehicles. Um, which is uh, uh, still part of this whole section, but it may be that it belongs back under one. Or it could just be referenced. You can just reference the section as well. Yeah, that's a good point. To exceed 20, 12, 12 levels, levels as, 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 as stated yeah. herein, right? Well, I mean, we're going to have to explain how we, we determine those 2012. We're doing it by the quantities of materials, by the yes. number of employees, and by the number of vehicles. But yes, and by the list of vehicles and, and which one, which they've provided for us in the well, application. Exactly, the yes. same type of vehicles. Yes. And, and getting back to uh, conditions of approval, when it yes. says employ employees, it would be employ no more than 19 employees. No more than 19, as shown below. Because remember, some of these employees are crossing a uh, Well, I, I mean, the, crossing the, the different question, businesses. The question is that we're going to get to. Uh, here we've got four, six people who supposedly have nothing to do with landscaping. Yeah, should they even be referenced? So then we take them out. Yeah. But potentially, if those yeah. people really have nothing to do with landscaping, uh, I, I mean, the problem has to be that if they do fill up a landscaping truck with their, uh, uh, with their, their, their doing landscaping. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a feeling that we should not exclude them so, so that that six can grow to 10 and mm -hmm. uh, this is all these old did, nursery did, employees. Right. Did, did we kind of discuss this early on where we said even though we don't have uh, the authority to uh, impose what they're going to do for the nursery business, we really have to uh, list the volumes, what right. employees, vehicles, materials in here, which encompass the nursery business, because otherwise it's not, it's just not enforceable. Yeah, and we did talk about this before you as how- the landscape employees, they say, well, we, we got 20 people for landscape, right. I mean, uh, nursery, well, we got 20 people for nursery now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that will become uh, more and more difficult as we go through. Uh, but certainly some of the materials are, the same types of materials are used for both businesses because they're uh, selling mulch as part of the nursery and using mulch as part of the landscaping. So this is where as we go through, there are certain things that we can regulate that may also be regulating the nursery, as in the quantities of mulch at any given time or total. But the point is, we are focusing on the landscaping. But yes, it's going to be, a, it's going to be an interesting line. I mean, if you don't have the total number here, the yes. employees, for instance, what Alex just said. Absolutely. I could say the guy's loading mulch into the back of the truck to take it to Wellesley or whatever. I could say he's a, he's a nursery worker. You guys say, no, he's a landscape worker. Yep. Well, he ain't going out on the job, but yeah, but he's loading the truck. It gets his, right. it gets his hand. Let's say no more than 19 employees. Yeah. All right. Okay, so back to, as, as we're continuing our idea of whether we do the log or the annual report, uh, three is sell stone, this is on page five, top of page five, sell stone dust, gravel pavers, landscape ornamentations, timbers, and related materials to implement a landscape project as defined in section 4A. Now the material that we were given is stone, which is a three-quarter stone, three-quarter inch stone, dense grade stone dust, 2012 level was 2000. You will note, actually Tim and I went back on this, back and forth on this, but landscape ornamentation uh, is not defined in the zoning. And so we need to consider how we define that. If you remember at one point, the uh, applicant had given us some supplementary materials with the definition of landscape ornament. It's either landscape ornamentation or landscape ornaments. It's a very broad definition and um, would include a number of things that we may or may not feel is appropriate. So one of the things that we should do between now and next week, or next meeting, not next week, is consider how we as a board want to define landscape ornamentation. And also remember that this is a May. The first part is 
um, a landscaping business is defined as, but this part is under the landscaping business may be authorized to. So the board has some discretion in how it defines these materials under section two. So keep that in mind as we go forward. Um, again, under this section, it's received deliveries of sell and deliver firewood to customers. Firewood is limited to total cords of 1,000 cords. And finally, provides snow plowing and snow and ice removal for third, third party, I think is the word we're missing there. Um, let me just double check. It says down. third person. Third person. Oh, third person, you're right. Just third persons, and including the town of Milton. Yes, Mike. <laughs> Going backwards a little bit, the uh, landscape ornamentation. Yes. <laughs> Pink flamingos, I mean. Well, that becomes a question if it's a landscaping business. Or is it a nursery business that sells landscape home? Well, but, but the, here, here's the question. It's a landscaping business that is where they say, you know, we can define the, the landscape ornamentations. Needed to implement a landscape design is the, the language and the zoning. Um, let me just go so back to Landscape it. ornamentations, timbers and related materials needed to implement a landscape design. So then the question becomes, what landscape ornamentations are needed to implement a landscape design by a landscaping business? To your point about pink flamingos, anybody can install a pink flamingo. So if we are considering a definition. Anybody but a nursery employee. <laughs> you could install a pink flamingo, Alex, or you know, Brian or I could. The point is you don't need a landscaper to install a pink flamingo. So if we are going to define any of these items under the, the May authorize, um, I would suggest that we need to consider what ornamentations actually require a landscaping business, a landscape or somebody who installs papers and other things to install, and what is more of a retail type ornament that anybody can install. So again, that's something, that's something that requires more thought than we can give in one night. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm immediately concerned about that, yes. that way of interpreting because I, I think you could make the argument that anybody could install mulch or anybody could install that's pavers true. with an instruction book. So, and I, I know it's a slippery slope, but I think that, that's, a, that, that's a, a flawed test in my mind. So I am certainly open to other tests yeah. because I think the concern becomes here, we're not authorized to allow the nursery business. In fact, we should move down to activities not authorized by the special permit because this runs into it. I think you need to think about the businesses that are currently on site, which is the nursery operation and the landscape. Well, the landscaping business isn't currently on site. That's the whole point. But the businesses that will be on site, um, just to remember that the applicant has said that they don't want us to consider sale of Christmas trees and related holiday materials because they feel that falls under the other businesses that are on there. And in fact, if you look at C, that is specifically listed as an activity that's not authorized by the special permit and site plan approval. Nursery operations, actually I need to add them, which I say are authorized by 1967 special permit that actually needs to add the 1987 as well. Um, construction activities for properties not owned by the applicants. Well, uh, this well, is something, well, this is C on page let's five. Let's go back to sell stone dust, gravel, pavers, uh, you say stone. That was from the application. But we've got stone, yep. dust, gravel, pavers. There's no information on that from the application. Well, so we still have to address it. I know we have to address it. So that's me. Right, Again, right. As, as I said, this is where we're pulling the stuff from the maybe, application maybe and asking the board the, to. On the side of that, uh, yes. say more info. Yep. And of course, we need an explanation somewhere to say that the reason we've got these 2012 quantities is that it establishes a maximum. Yes. It has to be, has Good point. To be stated it's, it's somewhere. It's maybe a stupid question, but three quarter inch stone, dense graded, and stone dust, 
three distinctly different things. Yeah, so does the 2,000 apply individually? So, so 2,000 apply each? each? Well, 2,000 total. The way this I read it is 2,000 from the applicant. Yeah. Well, I read this it as 2,000 total because total. it's on the same line. It's right. yeah. Everything else is broken out separately. So right. that's the way I would read this. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, so that makes how they measure these things? If you buy pavers, do you buy them by the I'm sorry, we're talking about the dense there. grade and stone dust. Yeah, this, no, it's all loose material. No, I think, I mean, the fact that the pavers, I think that falls right into the landscaping definition and, uh, excuse but me, but then we have landscape to determine or the ornamentation definition. How do you determine the quantity if there wasn't a 2012 level? Right. Can they have samples on site and have the materials delivered directly to the, the, the job site. That's an interesting idea, as a matter of fact. Um, that would certainly cut down on what is stored on site and the because number of deliveries coming to the level, site. I'm not yeah. sure how, how we come up with an arbitrary level. Everything right. else, we're going with a specific baseline here in right. 2012. Mm -hmm. Why can't we come up with a 2012 level? If they can provide one, then I'm happy to look at it. If they, But we don't have it right now, is I guess what I'm saying. Oh. Yeah. So I think that goes to Alex's yeah, more info on that. Okay, good point. Good job. More info. But I think the samples on site and deliveries directly to job is an interesting thing um, to consider uh, as we look at some of the other things. So, um, so the reason I was talking about activities not authorized by the special permit under C is to draw your attention to two other things. One is that longer part that starts construction activities for property not owned by the applicants. I believe, Tim, am I correct that came from the building commissioner's letter? I think that's where that got pulled. And then the second one is sale of any item not specifically authorized in section 4A or B. So again, we're limiting them to the 2012 activities and the 2012 levels, which means here we are in A and B saying here are the 2012 levels and under C, we're saying if it's not up there, you can't do it because it's not the 2012 level. Right. So that's what that line is for. So the, these four bullet points yes. are saying you can't do it. We we can't authorize it under. We are not order. authorizing it under this. Or but it is allowed under the nursery. No. So the first bullet is saying we are not authorizing nursery operations because the board of appeals has authorized those. So the, board, the planning board yeah. is not so authorizing those. It's not authorizing nursery, but it is not yes. authorized. It is, yeah, it's not authorized by somebody else. Yeah, I'm saying, I For was this, interpreting all the bullets as that way. It's yeah. not authorized this, but it is authorized. No, no, don't interpret all the bullets okay. that way. And actually, that's a good point. Maybe we should split the bullets up. Or at least so sale of Christmas trees and related holiday materials is also authorized by something else, not us. And then the two middle ones, as far as I know, are not authorized by anybody. So yes, I think I, I think the, your confusion is yeah. a good one, and these need to be split. The nursery, nursery operations. I think if you just put in at the end of the sentence in parentheses, you know, authorized by yes. 19, and then a parenthesis. Uh, uh, the is that an endorsement, though? I mean, no, we're just we're right. We I are understand specifically. what we're saying. We're saying it's not allowed. No, 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 no. We're not saying under it's not this allowed. permit. Yeah. We're saying it's not yeah, allowed it's, under this it's, permit. It's That's what we're no, saying. No, 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 no. That's not what we're saying. We're saying, we're saying we're it's not authorized. authorized by this permit. Fine. That's fine. So, but, but still, may be allowed on the site. That's fine, but okay. what, I don't think I don't I don't feel comfortable saying what allows that. I'd rather just say this oh, permit okay. doesn't right. authorize it. There are your operations. Period. It's their okay. problem to figure out. How it is authorized. So, then, all so then take out which are the authorized by the 1960s. But they have to be nursery operations which are separate and distinct from ah. landscaping operations. That's fair. Yep. It, it, that really doesn't change what you said more or less. No, I think it, uh, but uh, it clarifies it to your earlier point, Mike, about trying to distinguish from nursery and landscape. Yep. That says nursery operations, which aren't also contiguous with the landscape, like for example, the storage of mulch, are are not authorized by this. So storage of mulch, yes, and that goes to both landscaping and nursery. Yeah. But yeah. other things, yeah, I think that's okay. a good point, Alex. Yeah. All right. And, and of course, the storage of mulch is is perfect because if you're running a nursery, you wouldn't store as much mulch. Right. Exactly. Uh, so it's the additional. Mm -hmm. it's, which so which it. folds it all into one piece. Right. So. I'm looking for you. You know, I'm looking for in the 67 permit for the uh, 
sale of Christmas trays because it seems to me that uh, they didn't ask. If they they told us they don't they want it in here. They told us they did so not I want it in here. Know. Yeah, exactly. I, so have, I, I understand that. I, I if if I'm just interested to. Uh, well, you know, the board should. I, I mean, it. It, it does seem to me that if uh, they're wrong. Uh, I'm going to, I, if they, well, if, they, if they're wrong and, you're gonna get your tree out. and can't do any Christmas sales, uh, uh, that's sort of, uh, uh, that's sort of it for uh, uh, their nursery. If they're wrong and they can't do Christmas sales, they can always come back can under the zoning and ask right. us for, to modify ask for a, the small, a, yes, a hearing, exactly. a special permit to sell That'll be fine. Christmas exactly. trees. Emily, uh, uh, we didn't, you didn't address quantity on snow plowing? And yes. It was it was a question we had in the in the application anyway. Yes. It was a little unclear how we do that. Well, so. how, what they were showing us, they basically had they gave us invoices for snow plowing for two vent that they were subcontractors, I believe, on for two different companies. But I don't know if there was a. I assume that was just proving that they had done snow plowing at the time. But I you're right. I don't think it, I don't believe it addresses quantities. Level. So that's a. I might it would it right here. once again probably be employees, the equipment. employees and, and equipment, the equipment. Yeah. Okay, well that would be a good way to do it. Okay, so let's I mean, have a look it, at that. Is it already quantified relative to employees and equipment? No, we no. don't have snow plowing employees and identified. But so equipment, yes. So the snow we have snow plowing equipment. Fall under landscape employees. Well, they weren't they weren't pulled out of. You the know, it was either landscaping or nursery. There was not a, su a sub definition of. So no, we I, have I, what we were. Sorry. Oh, I see what you mean. You're just I saying. Just keep them. In April, I had seven landscape employees. Well, I maintained two of them through the winter, or three of them through the winter for snow plowing. So if you come down there, I still have four nursery people and, or you know, I still right. Have I see what you mean. Less than 19 people. Like, so it yeah. has to be with the existing vehicles and the, Which and I the think existing is, right? nine people. I, I guess. Yeah, that's a great way. Of, that might be a good way to interpret it. What we were given was two invoices: one for uh, chrism, brick, and stone and one for Johnny Driscoll Landscaping, and it just has a redacted number for the total paid. Okay. So there's no, there's absolutely no way to determine volume. So I actually think Mike's probably onto something there. Where I think that's a good we point. We based it on the so existing vehicles. And the existing there was a discussion about, you know, there's a difference between winter 2015 yes. plowing and if it right, that's a good point. Winter. That's yeah, an excellent sure. point. You can't do it on snow on that's volume on or dollars because it's, yeah, yeah I think that makes sense. a lot of sense. It's a great idea. What was the idea? <laughs> <laughs> it was annoying. We're going to um, we're going to base snow plowing and uh, snow and ice removal based on the number of existing employees and equipment rather than trying to assign a volume amount to winters that change. Okay. Regularly. At least I certainly hope it changes this year from yes. past year and in a downward, downward. fashion. So yeah. Thank you, Claire. Not that I want to hit anybody's snow plowing operations, but. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me, have you ever seen this much snow before? And I have to say, no. No, definitely not. So that, for the moment, takes us down to allowed hours of operation. Well, it gets us actually to construction activities. Okay, so construction activities. I mean, if they're, uh, uh, you know, building stuff for the landscaping business, it certainly is controlled by. Uh, yeah, this can by, be. Uh, no, this came from the building inspector. Hang on, Commissioner. Let me it find may, it. But the I just want to let you know where it came from. Is not uh, always. Isn't isn't isn't, isn't the building inspector saying mm -hmm. under the land under the it's not there are three this is not allowed? No, he had wanted us I've got it here, let me find let me hunt it down for a second. So um, and see. So he had had specific recommended conditions in here. And I am Okay, so this was C. I know you guys don't have this. It's his February 26th memo, or may, you might not all have it. It's under C, and it says in Section 2, Definition of Landscaping Business Permissible Activities, the terms patios, related grounds, and other outdoor areas which are owned by others is vague and needs specificity so as to prevent the landscape business from morphing into a construction business. They should not be allowed to build house foundations, accessory buildings such as garden sheds or cabanas, retaining walls over four feet in height, pools or pool aprons, or paved driveways with asphalt or any 
masonry product. He's got some additional information on that. So the reason it says construction activities for property not owned by the applicants is so that they can continue to maintain their own driveway and their own walls and build as needed, especially as some of the later mitigation items require them to build walls. Um, but it puts this in. Now, I am putting this in because the building commissioner requested it no, and I, we I, wanted to make I, sure I, we, I get it. I, yes, I get so. it. But it does seem what to me that think? if you if you go up, you have to, uh, uh, you know, you have to mention in up above that they can construct buildings for their landscaping business with Oh, owners. I see what you mean. So you would put it under well, where maybe it go? after under A maybe a create an A. Oh B, sorry B. actually B. I think it should probably be under B. Why, why oh, do you need, why four do you need to into five. What? Why do you need to? Because this this says these, these restrictions are only for, like you pointed out a second ago, if the land's not owned by. Right. right. But, so but if they own what, the land, what if they different. own the land, they can't, they, they can, they still can build on it sure, they can with, get a with and approval. They so you want to specifically authorize them to be able to build on that, their own right? land? <laughs> Anybody can do that. Does that I'm sound? Sorry, what was the? So, out, so because there's basically under C, there's the negative. You know, you can't build mm -hmm. on land that you don't own, mm, it see. implies the I positive see. that they can build on yeah. land that they do own. They still so that. Alex is suggesting that we specifically authorize them to be able to build on land that they do own in a, in a section further said, up. I'm just asking them to take it for what it's worth. Is that necessary? I mean, you, you don't, you're not going to tell me that I can build something on my land if I go get a apartment. You don't need to tell if me that. If they want to expand their wood barn, they say we're doing so well. They've got to go get a permit and do it. Well, okay. If they don't get the that, permit, then they can't do it. Well, I understand, but it isn't just a building permit. It is a, it's part of the special permit. Why? Oh, they can expand the wood barn, but they can't put any right. more wood in it. We, we, we don't give any special rights that About we don't About the 2012 stay. level, right? Well, I mean, to, the, I think they got a permit from the Board of Appeals for their um, wood barn. Yes. Uh, if we don't stay something in here, why would If we, we are taking over for the Board of Appeals, it, we should have the same, uh, I mean, we can, we can let the Board of Appeals authorize all buildings, but I, I mean, we're, we're in charge of the landscaping business. I'm not sure we want to authorize, specifically authorize them to build anything additional because they're supposed no. to be keeping to the 2012 levels, but we might consider authorizing maintenance of the existing buildings. I think just it's as implied. a clarification. Well, I'll, I'll, I know it's implied. Let, but me, let me think about yeah. uh, um, it. It does me seem to me that well. there is something to be said about their building, new buildings, which uh, needs a permit. Okay. Let's think, think about that. I think most of the then. items that are listed here, uh, this is a question for the building inspector, I think, but the items you're listing here, I think, with maybe the exception of a driveway, mm -hmm. need a building permit. Mm hmm. Uh, and I don't know if, I don't know what landscape, I don't know if a paver, I don't think pavers require a building permit. So I'm wondering if that can be a distincti distinctive point. That's a really good point. So we don't have to have all this additional language. You just say that they are not authorized to build anything that requires a building permit. We should double check. Maybe you the add land. driveways to that. Or yeah, something. exactly. Because no. I don't want to, I don't want to leave out anything. Mm-hmm. They're just... I, I circle pergola and fences like, you know, maybe. So a fence requires a building permit, and yeah, I think it's not. Over, what's that? Over six feet. Over okay. six feet requires a building permit. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're going to put some little dinky fences in and some bullshit sometimes as part of a landscape thing. Little picket. Actually, actually it's only eight feet. Big, big, that's big as a wind limit. <laughs> eight feet, Jesus. Okay, um, All right. same thing with pergolas. You, 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 you don't need a building permit to put in, in pavers in your driveway. No, yeah. I don't right. think so. All right, so then let's let's keep considering this particular section because it will be obviously important as we go further. And as you can see, it's not that easy to write. I think only second bullet is the one we need. Yeah, exactly. I think the others are fine um, for the moment. So D, allowed hours of operation. Now, if you remember, this was a question, and uh, we've called it out here, is uh, the application was for a different start time than the Zoning, the zoning gives us the authorization if we wish to allow, for good reason, an earlier start time. So 
The proposed is the sales office uh, to be open from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 on Saturday, and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, loading and use of noisy equipment for the landscaping business only, and you'll see that this table goes over to the next page, page 6. Uh, the zoning allows 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Monday through Friday, and the applicant has requested 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, Saturday at zoning is 9 to 5, uh, request is 8 to 5, and Sunday it's not allowed at all under the zoning. And then on the nursery sales, 8 to 6, 9 to 6, 10 to 3, and the zoning specifically allows 10 to 3. Deliveries, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on weekdays, and then not allowed Saturdays and Sundays. Emptying, emptying the dumpster, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m weekdays and not allowed Saturday and Sunday. And then you'll see um, there's some operational things where we pulled down because they were time specific, hours of operation specific. So no equipment or vehicle with a gas or diesel engine other than a car or other personal vehicle may be operated on the site before 8 a.m. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. on Saturday or 10 a.m. on Sunday and then the same type of vehicle, uh, gas or diesel, other than car or personal, may be operated on the site after 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday or 3 p.m. on Sunday. And that is, again, just to clarify those um, operating conditions that match up with the hours of operation. The hours, are, the hours would, would move if we moved these hours. Those would move in. So those yeah. aren't, those aren't no, call they, outs. Those are just explaining what yes, the exactly, okay, good, exactly. Okay. So I guess the question for the board here is really, and again, I don't know that we'll be able to answer it tonight. Do we want to allow those earlier start times for the loading? It's really just the loading and use of noisy equipment for the landscaping business for the 7 a.m. start Monday through Friday and the 8 a.m. start Saturday. That's the only difference between the request and the zoning. My only other question would be, why are we referencing nursery sales? Because we're not referencing, referencing nursery sales. It's the sales office for landscaping, selling the landscaping services. No, no. Where? Voting and use of noisy equipment. Oh, nursery for nursery sales. sales only. Oh, that one. I'm sorry. Because this, it, in the zoning, it specifically states that they can load for the nursery from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Sundays. So that's directly from the zoning. And that's why we're referencing it, is because it's in the zoning itself. OK. Got it. I think we should uh, keep thinking about this. Okay. Do we have any, I mean, is there any point of discussion, though, so we have something to think about? I mean, I, I'm just interested in your feedback if you have any points, because I I just like something to think about. This does, uh, I, I know we've, we've already went through this, and I know we have the information. Does Colta start at 7, Monday through Friday, and 8 on Saturday? You had that spreadsheet. I know you yeah. I don't have it on me, but we yeah. have that information. I can okay, bring that for the next meeting. Yeah. We've got... All the all the nurseries? Not not all of them, but a few. Uh, but the last getting to the Certainly, it would be nice to have the culture because then we can see if it's consistent with our previous. And it would be good to know as much about the others as we can. Yeah. Because uh, we have a fairness argument that's been made. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. And obviously, we want to do that. Okay. Um, let me just. See if I see that. Okay, I don't see the other language I wanted to reference immediately, so let's keep it on our list. So E is the list of vehicles from 2012. Um, uh, we have the well, one question for the board. So the applicant gave us the year of the vehicle, the estimated replacement date, the vehicle description, the vehicle use, whether it's nursery, landscaping, or both, and then what the vehicle actually does. Um, Tim had a, a good point, which is whether or not the estimated replacement date should be in the special permit because it, only, it is only an estimate. I think they were giving us an idea that it would be swapped out, so that's one thing to consider. And then also under E, so the first part of E is the list of the allowed vehicles, and then the second part of E is the condition of operation um, of those vehicles. So that's when we talk about uh, that they have to be turned off by 6 p.m. on weekdays, um, what, that they have to be uh, shut off immediately if they return after that, when loading cannot happen, um, backup alarms on equipment, equipment being turned off with non-use. You can see the rest of it. 
employees wearing earphones while listening to radios, CD players, and the like. The idea is that they're most likely to be operating equipment at that point. Um, well, the, where they will be parked, that they'll be properly registered. All of these are items that came from the application or from the zoning. Um, so, and then for all of these where there's a geographic um, item, so for example, the equipment will be parked in such and such a place, that type of equipment will be parked in that type of place, remembering that this has to refer back to the plans. Um, that are, yeah, exactly, that will be. So, so have a look through that, see if we've missed anything or if we've inadvertently put something there that you feel belongs in a different section. Getting back to the Bobcats. Yes. They've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, or four Bobcats, two gators. And a golf cart. Yes. Supposedly um, exclusively and uh, uh, used for nursery business and not used in loading trucks for landscaping materials. Bobcats three and four are landscaping. I, I see that. Okay. But, but, but the if, other two, yeah. If they use these bobcats listed for the nursery, for landscaping business, that would be a breach of the permit. Okay. And uh, uh, it it seems to me that uh, it's unlikely that they wouldn't use these bobcats. That they'd say, "Oh, we're loading a landscaping truck. Grab a bobcat. Oh, grab bobcat number three. Right. I, you, you know, I having these bobcats racing around everywhere uh, and saying, well, it's all nursery business. Uh, uh, it's, 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 uh, uh, it's a little troubling. And uh, I don't think that they can probably separate the use of the bobcats. And we're going to be making provisions for no idling of bobcats. I, I, I mean, there's already provision in the, uh, um, in the special permit, which we should Reference use the, the same yeah. uh, uh, use the same thing and and you know talk about uh, trying to avoid a lot of backing movements by bobcats because mm -hmm. uh, that's particularly annoying right uh, I hear exactly what you're saying I mean I actually worked at a nursery and it wasn't uncommon at all for people to say go get truck three or go get tractor one or whatever so I mean, I think if they, I don't have a problem with requiring them to use certain numbers, they certainly have to be numbered, probably yeah. engraved, not with stickers or something, but definitely numbered. And then, you know, I think encouraging them to have nursery, nursery, landscaping, landscaping, that's, that, that, may, that certainly motivates them to keep these, this equipment maintained. Because if Bobcat 3 goes down, they, they can't use Bobcat 1 the way it's written here. But they will. Yeah, I was going to um, say I mean, that. Then they're in violation. So yeah. it's. I understand. But they'll cover the number with their uh, <laughs> mud. It's a mulch. Mud, exactly. I, I mean, I think to Alex's point <laughs> that. I your ideas. Yeah. I think to Alex's point, whatever conditions we set up for all of the equipment has to apply equally to all the equipment because it is impossible to tell. If, if you are standing oh, I agree with that, on the street saying. or on the property line or whatever, you're never going to know if it's Bobcat 1. Yes. You're fine with the list, is what I'm you're with, saying. I'm fine with the list, and I'm fine with the regulations applying equally to the list. To everything. But yeah. I just I don't think we should necessarily say, you know, look, we're going to make, we're going to let all of the bobcats do anything. I I actually think it's better to have it. Limited. So three and four is landscaping only, and if you don't maintain three and four, you're kind of stuck. That's essentially what you're saying. That's which is what I'm saying. Right. I think the neighbors would like if they sent all the bobcats out and landscape. <laughs> I don't think they, the, the problem is side. I don't think they're leaving. I think they're loading yeah, in the morning. Exactly. The I think they're doing a lot of loading. Okay. But so. I think that we could probably work out a condition saying that um, you can have bobcats for nursery business only if, and then have a little description of uh, what those bobcats, <coughs> the the requirement that those particular bobcats should meet. Um, and, 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 you know, 
not not lock us into uh, uh, this particular situation. Certainly, I mean, one one glaring condition that they have to meet is that Bobcats one and two are the only ones that are allowed to be operating on a Sunday because only yeah. nursery equipment can load on a you, Sunday. You could say that only two Bobcats are allowed to operate simultaneously. One on for site. nursery, one. Oh. Oh, that's a good other good point. But that'd be hard to enforce. That'd yeah. be as hard to enforce as everything else you said. Yeah, so. well, uh, yeah but uh, still, the number of bobcats operating at once is. Uh, that's a, that's. I think that's an interesting I mean, thing to consider. But it, I think more than uh, there has to be more than one permitted because. Uh, uh, can we can we regulate that? Are we allowed to regulate that? We can propose the conditions. I would expect at some point, as we come closer to having a final set of conditions, we would, of course, share that with the applicant and allow it's the It's not the applicant. Well, yeah. I mean, my concern is we say you can only run two at a time, but that's, that's can, we, can we regulate nursery? No, is, is you're right. Question. You're right. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, right. that's a good question. I yes, think yes, you're yes, right. yes. I think you're right. Yeah. We're not in the realm of regulating the nursery. Right. Right. But that's you could, you, you can have, uh, um, operational guidelines, which uh, would not be operational requirements, but the operational guidelines would be a way of making the, uh, uh, making the premises a, a quieter place. And uh, if the guidelines weren't complied with, it wouldn't be necessarily a violation, but it would be uh, it would be a factor when renewal came up. I agree with that. I think the guidelines. I think that's I have an no interesting it. idea. It was the idea yeah. of having only two running on site right, at any exactly. one time. I just don't know if you can enforce that because no, they can I say it's nursery business. I said it. And I agree with you. So then I think I agree with the guidelines. 100%. I, I think that I, that the idea of guidelines brings up a really good point: is that we can have a set of you must meet these requirements, and then we can have a sort of set of best management practices guidelines in there saying beyond the requirements, we would, uh, we strongly recommend that you follow these guidelines. And as Alex says, use that as a way of doing the review. Because uh, of course, at some point, we discuss not just the operating, uh, or the, the operations here, these conditions that we're putting on it, but at some point we need to discuss other things such as the length of the permit. Um, uh, and uh, that goes into our the length of the permit and how we're going to review the permit at the end of that period. So that idea of uh, additional guidelines is a good idea. Yeah. So then the next thing after the trucks and the operation, or the vehicles rather than the operation, is the storage of materials. So um, this really is storage conditions. And this is where your point, Mike, comes in is the bins have a capacity of 100, each of the bins has a capacity of 160 yards. Edward, can, I, can I actually ask something yeah. real quick? Yeah, of course. Um, it was a question I had about um, <clears throat> some, of the, some of the vehicles have kind of like make and model. And yes. There's, they probably wouldn't stop making the Silverado, but is that something that, do you, I mean, do you, is that like level of, specific, like if there's a better, quieter, more efficient pickup truck that they want to replace it with. Do we require them to replace it with a Silverado, you mean? Yes. I think that goes to your estimated replacement date question, too, Tim, is what specificity do we need in the special permit? Do we actually need the estimated replacement date? And uh, that's a good point. Do we need that specific a vehicle description, or can we just say, Pick up, I don't think truck, you can say just pick up, okay. but I think you could certainly say or similar. Or similar is a um, good point. Yeah. Pick up is too vague. Yeah. So is dump truck. But but you we're good, we're going to want uh, uh, them to use nice equipment. In other words, if you if they can get a uh, a nice quiet truck or a noisy truck, we want them to get the nice quiet truck. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I okay. think that, you know, in the age of the internet, you can look up the specifications for any past vehicle at this point. Right. So you should be able to, in 2020, figure out if they bought the something that's similar or if they're way off the specifications. Okay. I, I, I think it's a great catch by Tim. I just think we need to be careful not to get too vague here. Right. Yes, enforceability is going to be key. So, um, uh, again, um, 
the under storage conditions, and we're on page eight towards the bottom now, uh, the number of bins was specified on the plans. We may want to actually add that to the text as well. Uh, they, each bin has a capacity of 160 cubic yards. They are noted that they'll fill each bin at the start of the season and reorder when volumes drop to 40 cubic yards. To your point, Mike, and this is where Tim and I were going back and forth um, as to how we restrict the amount that's on site at any one time, our solution to start with was at no time shall the materials be stored in the bins at more than the capacity. So in other words, you can't overflow the bins. We thought that was the simplest way of doing it. Maximum would be 160 cubic yards. Max, maximum would be 160 cubic yards per bin. So, so you could have three bins of mulch. Obviously, that means that you aren't going to have a bin of something else, potentially. Yep. So but you can't material. have your bins overflow, was the idea. So there's nine material bins. So you're talking about 1,620 cubic yards at any time? Mm-hmm. OK. So. But I, ha I am open to other suggestions of how to deal with that. So, and then I think uh, what Brian was calculating in his head uh, has to be pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Just some note about 100, no, not to exceed 160 cubic yards per bin, or 16. What was the number again? 1620. Or 1620 total. Okay. Yeah, and that, I'm just trying to find the totals here, but let's see. As related to the number of bins shown on drawing such and such. Well, Alex, yes. You know, I, I, we don't want nine bins of mulch. No, we don't. But they, they, I doubt that they do that anyway because they have to have the other materials on site. They but use up all that quantity. And otherwise, otherwise, they wouldn't be able to sell anything else. Yeah. And they're saying 12, they're basically limited to 12,000 cubic yards of materials if you, if you, if you just, I'm not counting firewood in that. Mm -hmm. So it's 12,000. That's fine because firewood's in the wood barn. Right, anyway. so it's 12,000 cubic yards. So you're talking about, you know, less than 10%. Any, no, I'm sorry, a little bit more than 10%, sorry, at any given time that can be on site. That's, I was actually thinking more like a third, so I think 10% at any given time is pretty reasonable. Reasonable. It actually makes me wonder if there's going to be more deliveries than necessary. But That's actually a, you want to sit there and cut, not right at this moment, but that would be an interesting uh, thing to do is if there's a total amount it's 12, of, then it's about I think actually they gave us in the application the number of deliveries per year. We should consider whether or not we want to put that into the special permit. Did we? We didn't do that under deliveries, did we, Tim? No, we didn't. Well, isn't that? Uh, doesn't that kind of collide with the volumes? Well, they had given us a, a, a maximum or an expected number of deliveries per year. Yeah, and that was expected. And yeah. The volumes of the volumes. If it takes. 10 trucks or 11 trucks, the volume's the volume. Except it's still the it's the deliveries that the abutters and uh, neighborhood have uh, objected to as the yeah. trucks coming on. So obviously we want fewer deliveries if right. possible. But so. I mean, no, you know, the, the vendor that's selling it to them as well as them are not going to want to accept to bring a quarter load of truck or something. Right, yeah. that's also I mean, that's, true. We yeah. can discuss when we get deliveries, but maybe we need to have the deliveries be, you know, not, no less than a certain amount of bins Well, what does, right. uh, wh how much, how much does 160 uh, cubic yards does that fill an 18-wheeler? Uh, I think an 18-wheeler does about, depending on the material, like 22 to 27 cubic yards. A, a wow. trailer dump? 22 to 20, 160 cubic yards is how many 18-wheelers? I, 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 I believe a trailer dump, maybe these guys know it, 22 yards? Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Ah. Mike, questions <laughs> oh, <no>. this way. <laughs> the idea is that we identify questions here and then send them over. So you were asking. But that's a... How many did you say, Josh? <laughs> you said 50. Oh. It depends on the time of year with the weights. Spring okay. is less, August is more, somewhere between 55 and 70. Okay, thank you. Here we go. So that could be three 18-wheelers. Mm -hmm which is a fair amount of material. Which is consistent with the application when that they say that they'll be filled up in the spring and the application said we had, they would have more deliveries in the spring. So um, you, You're saying this, the storage of materials, and we've got the amounts. It doesn't say what the materials are going to be. Or well, the materials are at the beginning. It comes yes. later. Well, the materials it are identified at the beginning. They smell free. They, uh, uh, that, if you turn the... 
Okay, wait, where did we put the dust free smell tray? I thought we'd actually moved it there. Because it is talking about storage conditions, which it would seem to me that would. That no, would they, they should be there. You're right. That's missing. Thank you. I thought we'd move those back there. Dust free. Where did we put that? Deliveries. Dust free, smell free. Smell free, yeah. I mean, under the storage, lighting, dumpsters, landscaping, and fencing, drainage. Yeah, I think that got deleted in the back and forth because I remember having a, uh, a number for it. So let me pull dust free, and smell might, free. Let you, me pull the language on that. You might say what are the materials that can go into these bins. Mm -hmm. Which materials and bins, yep. Oh, I know. Um, the, also, don't forget the next bullet point where uh, 527 CMR 1 in Chapter 31 governs mulches. So we just note that. But you're right, well, Alex. We, we need to have the others. And see what you know. it says because uh, uh, we should. Absolutely. Just to make sure that they're that we on agree the with ball it. up at the state level. This is where it is. If you go over to the top of page 9, the land care yard and the materials in the bin shall be watered regularly by the five permanently mounted sprinklers in the area or by hand or tank irrigation is needed to prevent dust and odor, odors. Um, we need to decide if that is enough or we need additional information. And then the fertilizers, insect, weed, and fungus controls inside the wood barn at least 35 feet from the lot line Materials will be kept in appropriate storage bins and any spillage should be cleaned immediately. I think there may also be a state rag on storage of those types of materials and we may consider if we want to reference that the way we did with mulch. Now one thing about mulch is that wetting it down is not necessarily the best idea in the world. Yes. <laughs> yep. So, so let's not uh, require that. Okay. Good point. I think the application had language about 15 minutes of watering three times a week or, or okay. something like that. So, that, that's, so let's hunt that that's down. In there. Yeah. Yep, and it, as we note which bins, which bins contain which materials, we should note that the mulch bins should not be watered. Right. At least not as yeah. regularly. Well, yeah, I want to be careful. We're, we're requiring them to water as necessary. Yes. Um, does that, that may cover the idea that you don't have to water the mulch because it's not a source of, it's not the same source of dust as some other material might but be. But we may want to be, we may want to consider being specific about that as well because again, part of what these conditions do is they set up the expectations for all of us, applicants, board, people reviewing the can um, we go back and put time. in what the fire department has already Yes, of course. For? I've forgotten about the fire department letter, yep. They already have this for Eagle Farm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you want to provide it to us? That we haven't already looked at. Perfect. The fire department has something specific. I am happy to uh, include it. I've already addressed this issue. Okay. From a dust and odor or just from a fire prevention? Because mulch does like to... Combust. We like fire, fire prevention. It's yeah. a fire, that's what I figured. 527 CMR, chapter 31 is fire. Okay, that's what I figured. That's fire, okay. All right, anything else under this section? If not, the next section is deliveries, and it says uh, all deliveries shall follow the procedures and mitigation process noted below. So again, this is set in, this is actually set into three sections delivery operations that covers when incoming deliveries are coming in and going out, uh, references the operations plan and uh, the direction of travel for all trucks, uh, references loading and unloading of firewood in the wood barn and loading and unloading of nursery stock in the land care yard. Two is off-site mitigation that covers the roadway signs and where they'll be, the delivery directions. Three is damage repair. So it covers the hard pack in the town's right of way uh, along Forest Street and Hillside Street and requires um, that subsequent damage once the hard pack is installed will be monitored and restored. They didn't, we didn't have a, a time period, so Tim and I put in restored within two weeks, 
but uh, we may consider whether or not that's reasonable um, to do. So have a look at this and see if we're missing anything or need more specificity. And we are coming up, by the way, just to 10 past 9 as we finish this. So um, as you're looking at that, I'll note that parking, lighting, dumpsters, landscaping, and fencing, and drainage remain. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to hit those tonight so we can make sure we're thinking about them between now and then, or if you want to go home and absorb. Well, not go home because we've got zoning after this, but if you want to absorb this and come back on the 8th. I think we should uh, uh, consider once again uh, some guidelines about when they make their wood deliveries. Uh, yeah. If they can do it in the middle of the day during the week yeah. uh, rather than on weekends. And I understand that some people aren't around then and want their firewood delivered on weekends, but it's as much as possible. When they truck out the stuff, uh, out, not trucking in, you're try out. and try and make it a big day. Yeah. Huh? Well, that actually brings up an interesting question, Alex, because the, according to the zoning, deliveries are not allowed yeah. Saturday and Sunday. So, do we distinguish but this is between taking them out? I know. Do we oh. distinguish between deliveries to the nursery? And deliveries from the nursery, Something. or do we say all deliveries? I think we need to consider Something that. Something to think about. Yeah, exactly. So parking um, just references the parking plan and uh, states that they're going to provide 34 numbered parking spaces and how those are going to be divided. Um, lighting references the uh, proposed conditions plan, requires that all lighting is downward directed to prevent glare onto adjoining properties. And then we had been talking, when we were talking about the lighting zoning, we've been talking about the uh, 90 degree, degree cutoff, so I threw it in here for your consideration. Again, that prevents the up light going into the sky and potentially also creating glare for neighbors' properties. So have a thought about that. It also requires that floodlights are turned off at the close of business operations each night. We may want to then refer back to the hours of operations, so that's clear. Yeah. Um, dumpsters screened by fences and plantings change regularly, or emptied probably, read, regularly to prevent odors. And then again specifies only between 2 and 6, and that no dumping, dumping into dumpsters should occur after 6 o'clock. So to prevent that, that noise. I think landscaping and fencing and drainage are going to be a substantially longer conversations. So I'm just going to call your attention to what's been put there. Obviously, the drainage um, refers to the drainage plan and notes that we don't have the, the sheet number. And then at one point, Thayer had provided a stormwater operations and maintenance plan which I've put under drainage, have a review of those. There's not that much else under drainage because at the time Tim and I were working on this, it was still under discussion. So uh, I think going through our notes from the last couple of meetings and putting it in would make sense. So that's where we are at the moment. Can I go we, up on just a couple of these? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so dumpsters, yes. we should consider some, just some, again, some sort of best practices. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, I think it's, relevant that the lids be remaining down on those mm -hmm. um, and that that should be required. Um, on the floodlights, I get the 90 degree cutoff. Um, is there a, should we further consider cutoffs to try to constrain the light to the property, the, the not the spillover, but the, the light out looking into people's second floor windows? Yeah. Um, I think those are my two comments. Okay, I think that makes sense. All right. Well, well, I've got a number of comments on these things. Shall we? Fire away. I don't. I, I don't think there Alex. should be hard pack on the uh, westerly side of Forest Street. All that does is increase the width of the street. Okay. Um, you know, the neighbors don't want it. They okay. want 
the street to be kept the way it is, and uh, that's reasonable. Okay. Uh, so then we need to think about how how the town's right of way is not damaged by the trucks and how we require repairs. Well, well, if it's not hard packed, it'd be well, repaired. I too. mean, Thayer has hard packed its side of the uh, mm -hmm. its side of the of Forest Street. Okay. On the town's right of way, it doesn't seem to me they have to hard pack the entire street. Okay. Within the town's right of way. Uh, on parking, we, as you may recall, the special permit says no parking on Forest Street mm -hmm. or Hillside Street. Yeah. And they say, well, there may be occasions during the year that they want to park and uh, uh, whether or not these would be landscaping activities that they would be dealing in. But it does seem to me that if parking for some of these events, however they may be deemed, uh, is to be allowed, uh, uh, they're probably going to have to hire a police officer okay. to uh, make sure that the streets don't get gummed up like it has happened in the past. I think that that in your guidelines section that you suggested would make a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, I can't think of a landscaping event that would draw. I mean, if we're not including right. Christmas trees, I can't really think they're, they're of one. They're talking but about I Christmas agree. parties. I understand, but that's gonna, they're not going to qualify that as a landscaping it's event. It's not a nursery uh, operation either. So well, that's, but but that's I'm certainly not street. regulating it under here. Be, or, I, I don't think we should allow street parking or even reference it here because I can't think of a landscaping event that's going to... I hear what you're saying, and I All agree right, with no, you. I, yeah. I, I agree with you. I, I, just... I, I think that maybe they have to go back to the Board of Appeals to, um, um, to deal with that. I, I, think I, that I, I think that's right. There is, it can't be a landscaping event that's going to. They're not selling Christmas trees. I can't think of one. Right. Anything else for tonight, Alex? You had some more comments? Well, I, I just wonder about the strength of the floodlights and. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. You, in your, in your uh, light suggestions, had a uh, certain intensity, and uh, yep. we know what the intensity is. And is it, is it too much? Because those are big lights. They've got big lights. Uh, yeah. And uh, it may be that uh, replacing.